I'm going to have to ask you to leave, Nadine. Not until we talk. Please, I'm really not up to this right now. Jenna, please, all I'm asking is that you hear me out, because there are things that you just don't know. <laughs> About what? About mine. Slow down. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't drive. I'm kind of in a rush. Stop! Frank tells me that he had to fish you out of jail. Uh, yeah, it was um, just some silly misunderstanding. No, the story is that you were sneaking around Spalding property, peeking through windows, spying on Alan What's-His-Name. Look, it was just a lark, okay? A bad one. And Alan Michael's not mad at me, so please don't be all right. Look. I don't like the idea of my daughter being in jail. I especially don't like the idea of you making a fool out of yourself over Alan What's-His-Name. Look, Alan What's-His-Name does not think that I'm a fool. In fact, Alan Michael Spaulding invited me over to dinner tonight at the mansion with his aunt and everybody. So, doesn't that tell you something? Yeah. I don't want you to get hurt. That's right, Vera. Miss Lucy Cooper will be joining us for dinner tomorrow night. Can you make something special? Of course. You like that young lady, don't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Alan Michael, am I too early? No, no, no problem. Uh, Vera, listen, if anybody calls for me, could you take a message, tell them I'll get back to them, and uh, set another place for dinner for Miss Grant tonight. She'll be joining us. Uh, we have some business to discuss with my aunt tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, uh, hi. I'm very excited over the phone. I am. I'm going to get your aunt to change her mind about WSPR. Oh. Well, Jilly, I hope you can, but uh, I got to level with you. I've never seen my aunt so rigid about anything in my entire life. I mean, I think it's going to be very hard for her to change her mind this fast. Oh, but you see, I don't want a handout. I've got a new plan. I really want the spalding half of WSPR, so I am going to try and buy it from her. Actually, I think that's a, that's a really good idea. You know, I don't think she wants to have half ownership of anything with Roger at this point. Well, Roger's hardly a problem anymore now that he's dead. Um, Billy, haven't you been reading the papers lately? Roger is as alive as you or me. Honey, honey, it's all right. Thank you. I, I, I just had the most awful dream. I put the fire in the, in the lighthouse and everything was destroyed. What? Oh, no more bad dreams, please. You're here with me now. And welcome. You eat something, okay? It'll make you feel a lot better. Here. I don't know. Can you I, I don't want it. Where's, where's, where's my clothes? Oh, well, I sent them all to the cleaners. They reeked of smoke. And I took the liberty of calling your assistant. What's her name? Daphne. She's going to be sending over some clothes from your studio. Where, where'd this come from? Oh, if you don't like them, they can go right back. And I ordered a dozen pair of shoes from Harrington's, and these, these jackets came from Bender's. Well, you went to a lot of trouble, Alexandra. <laughs> Darling, it's no trouble at all. Come on, try them on. Hmm? <clears throat> this tweet is very nice. Oh, I think this would be great. Well, these are, these are really great, <laughs> Alexandra. Thank you. But look, I, w I want you to know that. Well, I'm going to pay you back every cent, okay, as soon as we get the insurance checks. Not necessary, darling. Please. Oh, no, no, no. All right. If that's the only way, you'll accept it. But now go. Shoo. Shoo. <laughs> shoo? <laughs> you said shoo. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, Mindy, I really do know how difficult this is for you. When I lost this place, I thought I had lost such a big part of my life. 
memories in every single room here. But fortunately, I got it back. I can't imagine how it might have affected me if it were gone for good. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for taking us in. Thank you for accepting my offer. Well, it's not going to be for too much longer because we're going to look for a place to rent today. Well, Mandy, really, there's no rush. Take your time. I mean, you and Nick should take time to look for a place that you just love. Besides, you've had quite a shock. I think you should just take it easy. Perfect. Perfect, darling. Well, you can wear that tonight. Planned a lovely dinner for you two. Is it really the middle of the afternoon? Well, we didn't, um, we didn't go to bed until dawn, honey. Not much survived, did it? Everything that counts. You, me, our families. Yeah. Yeah, that's all that really matters. After... After we went to bed, I kept... I kept waking up because... I would think about something else that was left in the house, and I had this... I had this impulse to just run back and save it. Okay, it's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. It's all right. My wedding dress. All the letters that you ever wrote me. And a picture. A picture of my mother when she was 16, and I begged my father to give it to me, and he didn't, he didn't want to, and I just... I wish I hadn't, but I talked to him. You know, there's another way to look at this. Everything is brand new from this moment on. Yeah. I guess sometimes the things that seem important aren't really. getting rid of this stuff. Peter's walking now. He's into everything. Well, even the scotch? Oh, well, why not? The other day I was up in the bathroom upstairs. He'd tried open one of the cabinets, wrapped himself up in the toilet paper. He looked like a mummy. Well, maybe I should go to the store and get some of those gadgets baby-proof to place, you yeah? know? Thank you. That would be great. Excuse me. Oh, you... I got it. I'm just getting this out of harm's way. Out of Peter's way. Well, let me help you. Thank you. I'll put it up in the kitchen. A high shelf. Lock it up. Vanessa, you're not doing this because you had that scare about Billy drinking the other night, are you? No. Because even if it was true, Hiding the bottles is not going to stop somebody who's determined. I know. And I really overreacted the other night. I jumped to conclusions I shouldn't have. And I don't want your father knowing that I had a moment of doubt in him. Well, you seem pretty concerned still. <sighs> well, who wouldn't be concerned with the last 24 hours this family has had? I mean... My goodness. I doubt if any of us slept a wink last night. Poor Mindy. I know. I know. I'm just so thankful that nobody was hurt. I tried to reach you, you know, to let you know that we were all okay, and I couldn't find you anywhere. Oh. Yeah, I was over at Bridget's helping her move in. It got to be like 4 o'clock in the morning, so I just crashed over there. Huh? On David's floor. What, what? What'd you think I meant? Uh, nothing. Um, I heard last night that Roger Thorpe is alive. Wounded, but very much alive. Roger Thorpe is alive? Yes, I'm afraid so. I thought he was dead and gone. I did, too. 
Still and I had made up my mind that I was going to tell Billy that Roger's Peter's grandfather, but I can't do that now. I'm not going to. I don't think it would be good for him. It's your call, Vanessa. Yes, it is. I just want to make sure that Bridget doesn't tell him. I mean, I am so tired of just being led around my nose all the time. This is my year, you know, it's my turn to shine. Everyone better just watch out, because Bridget Reardon is going to bust out of her cocoon and fly. What have I got to lose, right? I mean, my baby's gone, heart's gone, the baby's grandfather's gone. No, he's not. What? You mean you haven't heard? It's been all, it's been all over the news. Look, see for yourself. Some people have sighted Roger Thorpe around town. Well, whoever did this is gonna wish they had finished the job. All I'm saying is people like the Spaldings, that they're rich, they're famous, they're glamorous, but they also operate by their own rules. They put themselves on pedestals. They don't need your help. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm not putting anybody up on any pedestal. Besides, if I am, I'm putting myself right up there with them. <laughs> Come on, I'm as good as they are. Isn't that what you always taught me? Yes, but... But? But that other night when I went to that, that fancy party up at the country club, I was listening to all the people talk. They're not any smarter than I am. It's just wear fancier shoes. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? <laughs> One minute. One minute. One minute. You're as, you're as old as the hills. The next minute, you're as green as they come. I guess it worries me. I mean, you're, I honestly believe that you're smart enough to handle Alexander, but how are you going to handle somebody like Alan Michael? <laughs> I mean, you've gotten yourself in trouble before in types like that. Oh, no, not this again, please. Is that what this is all about? Yeah, I don't want to see you get hurt. Isn't that for me to decide? You keep trying to run my life. Or is it maybe because you're afraid you made a mess of your own? I don't think Bridget wants to stir anything up, especially concerning Roger. I hope not. I mean, she's really trying to get her life back on track, you know? I think she's given up the thought that Hart's ever coming back. <laughs> That's why we went out last New Year's... Well, on New Year's Eve, you know, to, to meet new people. <laughs> Did you? No, but you know, we looked. And that's something I don't think she could have done a few months ago. She's really getting her life together. I mean, she's taking the college courses, and I told you she wants to redo the boarding house. And I'm just really proud of her. Good. But... I'm glad she has something else to occupy herself with. I think she'd be a lot happier if she could you know, see Peter from time to time without being such a drag for everybody. You know, I can see she just, she misses him so much. I know. I know. I understand. But... I've decided that it would be better for everybody if she didn't torture herself by seeing so much of him. But you, you never told her that before. I mean, that's, you, you said it was okay. You invited her. You two look awfully serious. Did I uh, interrupt anything? We were talking about Bridget. Yeah, she, she's really got her life back on track. Good. Well, I'm out of here. I'm going to go help her renovate the damn boarding house. Dylan. See you later. Hey. Oh, man. How you doing? I, I can't believe what happened last night. Yeah, well, look, we're doing all right, but thanks a lot. Well, okay, give him in your hug for me. Tell her I'll call him later. Yeah, okay, we will do. Yeah, right. she'll be happy to hear from you, Bill. All right, I'll see you later. Hey. Hi, Billy. Nick? Hey. Where's my daughter? How does she get along with Alexander? Well, so far, so good. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Now, I came here on my own, Billy, because I've been thinking about a lot of things. And there's something that I need to talk about. Something I need to talk about to both of you. Uh, is Nick back yet? Not yet, but actually I'm... I'm glad I can, wanted a moment to talk to you before dinner. Oh, really? What about... Well, before the fire, 
I realized things were a bit strained. But now that we're all living together under one roof, I... I think maybe it was a blessing in disguise. Oh, how's that? <laughs> well, my meditation teacher taught me the, the Chinese symbol for crisis was... Two figures. One conflict and one opportunity. So I'm thinking that maybe this crisis is nothing more than an opportunity to sort of pull this family together, you know? To do for each other as families do. Hmm. And just what is it that you want me to do for you, Alex? Well, naturally, I've been thinking about Nick's future. We both know he's loaded with talent, and now with falling behind him, there's just no limit to how far he can go. He already knows what he's... what he's doing. I mean, you know, he has the paper. He loves that. It's in his blood. Well, I wouldn't exactly say the paper was in his blood. He certainly does love journalism. Yeah, so, what's your point? I was just hoping that you would join with me in encouraging Nick to take what's due him as a Spalding heir. Well, you know Nick. He's, he's very stubborn. I don't want him to get behind some false sense of pride, thinking he has to do everything on his own. That would be rather short-sighted, don't you think? I don't think it matters what I think. And I know it doesn't matter what you think. Nick is a big boy. He can make his own decisions. Exactly. And I think it was a very important decision he made when he stepped in, wrote those articles, helped us get Spalding back. And I think he also realized how he could restore Dylan's construction company for him. What? What, what? what? what do you mean about Dylan's business? I realize none of the papers have been formalized yet, but I think it gave Nick a great sense about it. some of the good Spalding can do for people. You know? And I think it would be rather foolish if you to try to talk him out of taking his rightful place in the scheme of things. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, hold it. Are you trying to tell me that if Nick doesn't go back to work at Spalding, that you won't give my brother his company back? Oh, Mandy. Did I say that? Buzz is a funny kind of guy, you know? I mean, he he acts tough, like, like he's seen everything. But the fact is that he just can't pass up anybody who's in trouble. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be a, a child with a broken toy or, or a lost dog, but Buzz has got to go in there and fix it. Would you please get to the point as though I didn't know what it was? It's just not fair to take advantage of him. You can't expect him to stand between you and the rest of the world without a thought as to what he needs and what's good for him because his heart is so big that he'll just fall right into it. Now, wait just a minute. Buzz is a grown-up here, okay? And everything he's done for me, he's done on his own free will. Do you think this is a trick? Do you think that I lost this child on purpose so I could get Buzz Cooper to come running to my side? No, no, of course not. Why didn't you just leave? Yeah, but look, I am very sorry about what happened to you. I really am. I'm losing your faith. A miscarriage. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. All I'm asking you is, is that you don't let Buzz feel responsible for this whole sad situation. You're asking me for something that I just cannot give you. Now, you and Buzz were over a long time ago, long before he ever set eyes on me. And I'm sorry things didn't work out between the two of you. Things were working out just fine between the two of us before you showed up at our porch on Thanksgiving Day. Look, I know you think that you need him, but you have no idea what Buzz means to his family. Why don't you speak for yourself, Nadine? All right. You have no idea what Buzz means. feeling sorry for yourself and go out there and get him. I need but Yes. But I am capable of surviving without him. I mean, I did it for 20 years. I can survive without him. But what you don't seem to understand, what you don't seem to get, I... 
You don't appreciate the fact that this is so complicated. You see, my family has been scattered and broken to kingdom come, and it's only just now that we're, we're pulling things together. Finally, we're, we're mending fences, so it's not just me that I'm thinking of here. Yes, but you're still trying to run everyone else's lives for them, aren't you, Nadine? Your children are grown. I'm not stopping Buzz from seeing them any time he feels like it. You have so much. You have children and grandchildren. And I don't have anyone right now. Except Roger breathing down my neck, trying to make me pay for everything that went wrong between us. Oh, my God. You shot him, No, I didn't shoot him! At least not when it counted. I don't owe you any explanations. Would you please get out? I've heard what you have to say. Now leave or I'll get you thrown out. You are not even folding mansion anymore. You fucking kids just can't order people around anymore. Look, I tell you something. Buzz is not going to stay with you forever, no matter what you think. And every time you throw it in my face that he ran out on me and the kids, I want to tell you something. He came back and he is going to come back again. Nadine, this is neither the time nor the place. If you're so damn sure about it, here huh telling me to let him go go get him i am just trying to spare him from something that i know he is going to regret come come on i'm sorry jenna oh. Oh. how can i explain this when we were traveling around together i used to try to convince myself that the past didn't exist and the future was swimless. But you know what? I see things differently now. Is this going to be a long speech because, like, I really got to do my nails before dinner tonight? Shut up and listen. You're going to get some parental wisdom. Oh, maybe tomorrow, okay? But actions, actions have consequences. When you fall in love, there are consequences. When it doesn't work out, there are even more consequences. I mean, relationships are just incredibly weird and complicated. I hope this time you look before you leave. You're feeling guilty about Nadine, aren't you? No, I don't know. I don't think guilty is the wrong word. Look, I just think she's great, and I don't understand how you can choose that snooty old Brit over her. She's not snooty. I mean, Jenna hasn't had anybody she can trust. She just has a little edge. <laughs> so she's gonna trust you? <laughs> Look. I am trying to do good by so many people that I'm probably doing bad for everyone. Don't you think I know that? Okay, okay. But I still vote for Nadine. You're not running the election, darling. Yeah, and neither are you when it comes to Alan Michael. You know, you're too fresh for your own good. Yeah, I know. You told me that once or twice before. Come on, Dad. I just don't get it. I don't understand how come you don't like Nadine. I love her. Can you understand that? Frank doesn't seem to understand that. He thinks it's impossible to love more than one person at the same time. You can understand that, can't you? Yeah, actually, I can. It's sort of like they're there and there's something there and you don't know exactly what it is. And everybody else thinks you're just setting yourself up for a failure, but... You've got to go after it, otherwise you're just going to kick yourself for not going for it. Something like that. Yeah, I know. It's the same with me and now, Michael. You don't fuss with me anymore? Just wish me luck. I'm willing everything I have into this station, blood, sweat, my bank account, but I still need your help, Alan Michael. Well, if you pitch this to my Aunt Alex, Jilly, I will stand behind you 100%. That's great, but I need more than your moral support. I also need your financial help. Now, as you said, this is a good proposal, but it's not enough. Look, I, I swear to you, I will make your investment pay back and then some. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Jelly, come on. I owe you. I'm not going to break my promise, like I said. Say 
Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, look, maybe uh, you should give some thought to being more than a uh, silent partner. Oh, no, 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 no. I just got back at Spalding Enterprises. I, that's all I want. That's what I fought for. Julie, I learned from my experience at the journal, I don't like small ponds. Yes, but WSPR is a small pond now, but it won't be for long. Not if I have anything to do with it. And besides, I mean, why can't you do both? Look, I will be there on a day-to-day -day basis making most of the decisions, but I could really use somebody like you to bounce ideas off of every now and then. Alan Michael, you are one of the smartest men I know. Yes, oh. you're, you know, yes but you're totally unconventional. I mean, you've got your feet on the ground, yet you're willing to take risks. I know that if we work together, we can take WSBR to national attention. <laughs> Bravo, Jilly. I couldn't have done that better myself. Hey, you know, wait till I show you this color paint I'm getting for the hall. Um, you know, you can have it put in your room, too, if you like it. And I was, I think I remember the exact color my grandma V had the living room. So I talked to the guys at the paint store. Hi, Dylan. Hi, here's the stuff you wanted. Hey. Hey, man. How you doing? Drill Sergeant got you working, too? Ah, uh, she knows me better than that. When I quit working in a place, I quit working in a place. My turtle, on the other hand, would be willing to do certain chores for a reasonable wage. Hey. So you heard about Roger? Yeah. Yeah, David showed us the paper. Uh, I was just talking to Vanessa. And, uh, she doesn't want anyone to know that he's Peter's grandfather. Especially Billy, she feels that would send him over the edge. Do you really think that, that Roger would try something he found out? I think he would do everything in his power to mess up this adoption. Yeah. Look, I, I won't say anything, okay? And I'll make sure no one else does either. Okay, I guess that's the best thing. All right, what do you want me to do? Oh, uh, David, putting hinges on the cabinets out there in the kitchen, that'd be great if you could help Yeah, I'd better help him. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah. Well, uh, what did you want to talk to Billy and me about? Well, Billy and I spent some time last night together, and it gave me a real opportunity to think about a lot of things. Well, I, I know I was wondering what the two of you were up to. Well, we talked for quite a long time about what it meant to be in a family. And I guess because I was raised as an only child, I... I never really realized before just how much one person's actions can truly impact the other members. Well, yes. That's true. Yeah. You know, I guess I kind of see it like a... like everybody is joined together by an invisible cord, you know, forming one unit, so that when something happens to one person, it really sets off a reaction to all the people involved. So I think it's really important that we all take care of ourselves and that we also take care of each other. Billy, did you say all this last night? What? Well, no, no, not exactly. I mean, Billy spoke about you and Melinda and Dylan and Bill and Peter and just how much he loves all of you. And I couldn't help but admire what this family really has, a desire for openness and a willingness to communicate. Those are really important qualities and they're worth fighting for. And my prayers are that they will also be the basis of my marriage as well. Well, I'm relieved. The two of you look... You looked so grim when you left here last night. You know, I guess Billy kind of gave me a new sense of what it meant to be a father and how important it is to be the kind of father that everybody can depend on. So I want to say thank you, Billy. Oh, uh, gosh. I'd better go tend to him. Ned? Yeah. Uh, sometime I'd like to talk more about this with you. Thanks. Thanks. Billy, I meant every word. This family means a lot to me. So please, 
Don't go back on your word. Don't hit the bottle again, man. You got it. <laughs> you got it. All right. Ah. Good night, Billy. Good night, Dick. Mindy, I didn't mean to startle you. No, that's all right. Showers haven't been the same for me since Psycho. After a little talk, I just wanted to make certain there were no misunderstandings. There's no misunderstanding, Alex. You were trying to blackmail me. You want Nick back at Spalding, and you want me to help you do it. Mindy. Mindy, do you really think I could coerce Nick into the... Aligning himself with Spalding if he didn't want to. No, actually, I don't, but I think you'd give it one hell of a try. Can we call a truce? You know what? I'd really like to. That would be lovely, but you always seem to break them. What about you? Me? Well, it's no secret. I mean, you're as stubborn as I am. You said time and time again you don't want Nick anywhere near his Oh, house. that's not true. Fair so. Come on, the only time you could ever stomach him aligning with the, with us was in the courtroom battle, and that's only because you found a way to help your brother. The thing that I can't stomach, Alex, is that you're always interfering. Nick likes his life the way it is. Why can't you just leave us alone? Well, suppose I were to offer him something that he did like. You know, all I'm asking is that you don't automatically take a negative stand to that, you know. Truly. Let Nick make up his own mind. know everything that's going on in there, but I do know that Jenna is a patient in the hospital. Hey, Dean, she has just been through a very traumatic experience. I can't let you upset her like I that. I know, I know, Lillian. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. I, it just got out of hand, that's all. I thought we could just have a discussion. Oh, I'm afraid it's going to have to wait, all right? You know, Buzz brought her in last night. Were you here? Yeah, I was here. Took very good care of her. You know, he's his or bedside all night long. Did you know that? Yes, I know that. Look, do you do you want to go down with me to the commissary and have some coffee together? No, thanks. Thanks. Okay. mistaken. Mrs. Sporting left strict instructions to hold all calls and visitors. You got a lot of moxie in this, Grant. Remind me of myself in the old days. Now, and Michael, you'd do well to keep this lady right close by. I mean, she's smart as a well, whip. Ellen, I told you that he didn't intervene again. You simply want to interrupt him. Uh, could 
you um, please call up your guard dogs and let them know that I'm your date for dinner tonight? Tonight? Dinner? Yeah. Remember, you you asked me this morning. No, no, that, that was for tomorrow night. It, it is tomorrow night. Yeah, no, but I meant tomorrow night, tomorrow night. Oh, boy, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, I can see how we got confused. Vera, please, set another place for dinner. Well, we certainly have a full gathering tonight. Yes, and it's all my fault. I'm sorry. You look great. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to finally meet you. Thank you. Feelings mutual. Oh, Vera. I'd like you to hold up dinner for a bit. We'll have the champagne in here. Too. Um, and Alex, actually, uh, Jillian and I have something to discuss with you before dinner. Yes, I think you'll be very interested in it. Yes, fine, fine. But first, I have an announcement to make. Uh -huh. Let's look out the window and see what we can see, okay? What do you see? I see... Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> oh we better change you. Come on. Let's go get your dice. Come on. I was thinking maybe something a little softer. Well, as long as it's not dark. No, no, no. I don't. I don't mean dark. I mean uh, atmospheric. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds dark. No, it sounds what atmospheric. What is the deal with these screws? They're too big. Don't we have anything smaller? Um. Yeah. In the brown tin box. You know, I almost forgot, Bridget. I ran into this guy that I know who goes to Springfield U, mm -hmm. and uh, he said that he'd like to meet you. Hey. Yeah, I guess he's seen us walking around, and uh, he thinks you're pretty cute. I didn't tell him that uh, you were bossy as you are, but he'd like me to set you up on a blind date. Blind date? Yeah, I mean, he seems like a pretty nice guy, Bridget. You go out on a blind date? Well, I... Hey, really, I, I don't think he's that bad. Well, why not? Why not go out on a blind date? What have I got to lose? Uh, I was shuffling around in that old closet there. I, things in there I haven't seen for a long time. Uh, uh, did Nick leave? Yeah, a little while ago. Listen, why don't I take Pete off your hand? Got him? He's I got, wet. I got, I got, oh, yeah, I got to change him now, okay? you're here. Uh, I'll give you the grand tour in a minute, but right now I have some very important business, so uh, keep your fingers crossed. Alexandra, I realize it's a bit unconventional. Discuss business here in your home rather than at the office, but I... Oh, thank you. I do have something that I think will be very interesting to you. Yeah, and Alex, I think you're really going to love this. Whoa! Well, bye. In a minute. Now, first, I would like to officially welcome Nick and Mindy to the family home. We're all so thankful that you're alive and well. And, in the wake of this recent loss, this disaster, I think it's a perfect time for giving an early wedding present. Something to look forward to. And uh, something I hope will be representative of many good things to come. So, this is from Nick's family, and it's for Nick's family. So I present to my brilliant and beloved son, the Spalding Half of WSPR. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 